Hey folks, welcome to the Clear Creek Cabin Mini Farm. So today's the big day. We finally got a nice uh, day where we're supposed to have about 50 degree temperatures here on uh, the uh, 1st of February. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to install our new little cook stove. It's a Glenwood F model 207, which is a very small footprint stove. Uh, we're going to replace our existing airtight wood stove up in our living room in our little mini cabin. And the purpose behind that is that we found that the airtight stove really pretty much just sends the heat up the chimney. Um, it's a steel stove. It's got a beautiful glass front. It's wonderful because you can sit there and watch the fire and that it's real pretty and all. But as a heating unit, it just doesn't seem to work all that well. Um, so what we thought we would do is we would put this little antique uh, cook stove in there because now we can have it be a dual purpose. We'll be able to uh, cook on it as well as heat the house with it. It has a small firebox. Uh, we should be able to conserve a little bit on wood. Um, and it being all completely cast iron, it should radiate a lot more heat. Uh, we'll have to tend it a little more frequently, um, and it may not last overnight uh, to keep the house uh, warm overnight, but that doesn't matter. It's easy to start the stove up first thing in the morning and warm things up. A hot cup of coffee in a cool room and the fire started, nothing better. So, and, and that's going to kind of allow us to be a little bit off-grid. Um, we're really not off-grid. We're kind of half off-grid, part off-grid. Uh, we could be if we had to be. Uh, obviously, life is great, and uh, we continue to enjoy the uh, comforts uh, of the uh, utilities that are provided for us here. Um, but if we absolutely had to, uh, having a little stove like this in the living room uh, as part of the kitchen would allow us uh, quite a bit of room. Um, we'd be able to cook on it. Uh, we'd be able to heat the house with it, boil water with it. Uh, the thoughts are... are uh, unfathomable as to what we might be able to do to help support us if we ever had to go off grid. Uh, don't plan on it, hopefully you never have to, but again, uh, we're not preppers, but uh, we're prepared. <laughs> so anyways, that's the game plan today. We're going to take the old stove out, put the new little antique in, take the new stove out, put the old one in. I think that's probably a better set. So come on along for the journey. Uh, we're going to have to load things up on dollies. We're going to have to put them on a pallet and with the tractor. Uh, it's going to be quite a day. We've got to take the brick out of the old stove, uh, the new stove, I should say, that's in the house, uh, which is going to be an endeavor. Uh, take that all out to get the weight off so that we can get it out of there and install this one and, and move it all. It's going to be uh, quite a journey for just two people. So come on along. should be fun to watch. I started up a fire in our, uh, our other Glenwood that we have. Uh, this is a much larger version of the uh, uh, Glenwood cook stoves. This is called the 8K, which is a very, very large stove. It's probably one of the largest ones that they made um, in the Glenwood packages from 1903, I think it was. So uh, we decided to get the smaller one for inside the house because this certainly would overpower our little 500 square foot cabin. So uh, I fired this all up. It's made it nice and warm here for us today while we, uh, while we uncrated this. Um, it's really a shame that we have the broken piece on the top. But I did reach out to the uh, man who did the refurbishing for us up in uh, Massachusetts, and he had another one of the top pieces that he's going to be able to get us. He's going to sandblast it, repaint it, and uh, get it down to us. Uh, guy's an amazing guy. He's been doing it for well over 30 years. He's got a full inventory of old parts and pieces for these stoves. So uh, luckily he had one, and that's going to work out great for us. Uh, the stove otherwise is done, is in a beautiful, beautiful condition. He did a beautiful job refurbishing it. And we'll show you that when we get it in the house. We had had one very similar to this years and years ago. Uh, it was a Clarion, a uh, modern Clarion that we had when we lived up in Connecticut. And uh, we used to cook in it for the holidays. I'd cook lasagna and, and turkeys and chickens and whatever we needed to uh, during the holidays up there. So we're looking forward to doing this again. It'll be, be a lot of fun. So stick with us and uh, stay tuned in and we'll show you uh, installing this in, in the house and taking the other wood burning stove out. <laughs>
Okay, this is the old pipe and elbow that went to the other stove. This is where the new oval transitions to round. And what I've got to be able to do is make a mark as to where I've got to cut this pipe right here. So what we're going to do is use a level and calculate where we need to go right there. Okay, so here's the process. Um, I've got my mark right here. What we'll do is use some of this painter's tape to put around here so we don't scratch the pipe. Okay, so what I found the best way to do it is go to the back of the pipe where you're not gonna see it in case you make a mistake. And then what you do is you just start with your hacksaw and you create a spot where you can get through the, the pipe in a nice straight line. And once you get through the hacksaw, you should be able to put the blade for the uh, jigsaw in there. Okay, to install the damper, uh, there may be a different way of doing it, but the way I always learned to do it was is that you measure the diameter of the shaft of the um, damper, which I believe is probably just about a quarter inch, a little bit less. What you do is you start out by where you locate your damper to drill the hole the size of the shaft. And then what you can do is you can, you can take the um, rod off of the damper, you just continue to spin it all the way around like that, and pull it all the way out. Take off the spring and the head, the two heads, Okay, and then what you do is you try to find the center of the pipe here as best as you can from end to end and drill your first hole right here. Just looking at the distance that it needs to be in the pipe, you don't want it to catch into any of the uh, flange for the elbow or the flange for the next piece coming up. So you're going to want to try to set it somewhere in the middle there. So I've got it right here. I made a mark right here with a pencil. Now again, you can eye it. This doesn't have to be an exact science. The pipe should be six inch diameter. So somewhere around three inches to your end should be okay. Right there. Now this is the side that I want to put the handle on. So now what we'll do is we drill a hole so your drill doesn't walk on you. Okay. Now. What you can do is put the damper on the inside. You can feed the parts through it. And what you should be able to do is put this on a block of wood and just give this a tap, and that'll make a mark on the bottom side of your pipe. I want the damper to be on this side over here. So I'm going to put it on that way. Don't forget to put your spring back on. Put on your retainer, the spring. And then the next spring retainer. There we go. Don't have to do this twice. And we should be able to hold that right in there. There we go. Okay, let's do it. With a new stove having the small firebox that it does, we had to uh, split the wood uh, probably three more times for what you would usually split a piece of wood to fit a uh, normal wood burning stove or fireplace. Uh, a little extra work, but it's gonna burn uh, much better. Okay, that's it folks. It's all installed. Now the next thing for us to do is get her started up and cook something on it. Maybe we'll cook you on it. What do you think? Thanks for tuning in. Stop back and see us. Give this video a thumbs up. 
And uh, please subscribe when you get a chance. God bless you till the next time we see you. Take care.